Welcome to the physics lab. Okay. Today we're going to do the double slit diffraction lab. If you hear any background noise, that's from Haley and Alex who are trying to do a lab that, you know, they're a little slow, I guess, or something. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to start off with a reminder. Uh, By the way, uh, there seems to be some confusion about this. There's not, there shouldn't be any eating in the lab. Okay? No eating at all. Come to think of it, there shouldn't be any drinks either. No eating or drinking in the lab. Right, Greg? That's it. It's posted. Okay. On the computers, on the wall. Yeah. I don't know who would get an idea that it's okay to eat in the lab. So double slit diffraction. This is probably the hardest part of this lab right here, using this thing here. Because what it has on it is a whole bunch of slits. So I guess you could say that so. this is a piece of slit. Yeah, I actually can see this. Okay. And you have to move things. You loosen this one up here. And then you rotate this. You can rotate the whole thing like that. Until the double slit ones here, which it says double slits. Double slits. Let's put it that way so they can read it that way. There we go that they are facing vertically here. And then you tighten it up. And if you look through here, you can see each one of them. And in fact, if we take here, a hold it up to the window. flash, okay, let's see there. Maybe the flashlight? No, that works good. That works good, okay. So now the double slits um, are 25. vertical. Okay, then we have this here. Okay, so this is good. But we're not going to use this one because Greg already set this one up and aligned it right over here. Now, the other thing you have to do is you have to measure a distance. It's not this distance here. That would be too easy. You have to measure the distance from here to the wall. All right. How do you do that? We'll give you a tape measure. All right. So. And I'm going to go over how that lab gets set up a little bit here in just a bit. But we're going to say we have that distance there, and that's called X. X doesn't change throughout the lab. So one thing that you should do is make sure that it doesn't change. How do you do that? Well, there's two things that can make X change. One is if someone moves the wall. Probably not going to happen. The other is if somebody comes along and moves this. Oh, yeah, that happens. So how do you prevent that from happening? Do you have any ideas, Greg? Tape. Tape, yeah. Just take some blue tape and tape it down when you're ready to start. Just, it's invisible right now, but pretend it's there. Okay. The other thing that you're going to need is a laser. All right. This is a laser. Do not take the laser and shine it in your eyes. That will hurt. And I have to fill out a long report and I really don't want to, so I'll probably just lie and say you stabbed yourself with a knife or something. Okay. The laser is red when it's on. And when it's off, it's not red. Okay. And you want to set it up so that the laser is focused on the double slit. Now. I can tell you right now it is because Greg already set it up for me. But then I un... Oh, but then he undid it without telling me. Greg, you evil person, you. What I do here is I take the flashlight and I shine it through here. And then I'm trying to get it through the double slit. And it's not quite in the right spot. So, thank you, Greg. I use these, dot, these, these screws over here. And I did it the wrong way. Until I can see both... The, I can see it, trust me. Trust me, I really can. Until I can see the slit going vertically and the laser goes a little bit kind of horizontally, I think, at least. All right? And so now it's shining through here. Oh, it looks good. Now, how do I know it's actually working? Well, if we go all the way over here to this piece of paper taped to the wall and we turn the lights off, you can see a bunch of red lines. There they are. There they are. And they're red. And they're lines. Just like I said. 
Now, you're basically done with the lab. No, not really, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now you have to take your measurements. How do you take your measurements? Well, I'm going to show you using a ruler, just because I've, it's a little bit easier to ex explain, but you could probably use the caliper to get more accurate results. What you do is you go over to your piece of paper, and you mark the center one in the center. There we go. And then we mark the next one over and the next one over here in the center. And we can do all of them. The, actually, there's a couple more, but I don't, we don't really need them right now. And you measure the distance here from here to here. That's 2.8 centimeters, and this is, oh, about 5.8 5 .5 centimeters. Everything is in centimeters. Everything. So then we come back over to here, and we're going to fill out our Excel spreadsheet. Okay? Now, in this case, this, this spreadsheet is probably going to be a little bit revised here, but I said for m equals 1, that was the first one, that it's y was 2.8. So I type in 2.8. And I said for y equals 2, it was 5.8, didn't I? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, the slit ID, I said was, I didn't say what it was, but it was one. Why? Because that's the first one we're doing. I might make that one go away. It doesn't really matter what order you do them in. The distance, I'm saying right now that's 527 centimeters or 5.27 meters for those of you. And the D, you read that off of the, uh, the slit and it's 0 0.025 centimeters. Now you got to be careful because that's actually, I think that's written in millimeters. Uh, so you want to make sure to translate that into centimeters. So now you have everything you need to make your calculations. Well, how do you calculate tangent of theta? Let's go over to the board. I hope you're not bored. And Greg's going to walk around so he can get a better picture of the whole thing. Hopefully he won't knock over the lab equipment while he does it. What we have here is the distance from the, the slits to the wall, and that's x. Uh, right, uh, that's the same as in your spreadsheet. And the distance between the center and the, the center of each of the um, other, what are they called? Lines. Lines, thank you. Uh, that's why. Why? Because I said so. Simple trigonometry here. Tangent of theta, this, this angle we're looking at right here, tangent of theta is going to be equal to y divided by x. Alright? So all you have to do for your tangent of theta column is just divide your y by your x. And your x is always going to be the same. That makes life easy. Now, in the next column, you have to calculate theta. We're going to get to that one in just a minute because there's a little bit of trick to that. But let's just assume you have the theta because then all you have to, to figure out your wavelength, all you have to apply is the formula that lambda is equal to d sine theta divided by m. What the hell is d? Well, d, if you look at your spreadsheet, that's the diffraction uh, separation whatever, spacing. Distance between the slits. The distance between the slits. Thank you, Greg. So we can get that. That comes right off of the, off of the, uh, off of the uh, piece of plastic. Theta, we can calculate that. I'll show you how in just a second. And M is the number of how many slits it over. So one, two, three, four. Okay? So it's like, I think we go up to five. All right? So you have to go, you have to do five of the slits. Five of the uh, lines on the wall there. And it's a little bit easier to see them all when we shut the blinds. Uh, but we don't want to do that right now because it gets too dark. Okay, so now we calculate our wavelength. We do it for all of them and then we take the average for this particular slit. What number do you think we're going to get? Well, actually, we already know the answer. And I'll tell you how we figure that out <laughs> in just a minute. Stay tuned. Because the one thing I want you to realize is Excel, in this case, isn't always your friend. Because for some stupid reason, ask Bill Gates, not me, in Excel, theta is in radians, not degrees. When you do it like tangent of theta or sine of theta, everything has to be in radians. Why? Like I said, 
Don't ask me, ask Bill Gates. So you have to be able to translate between them. So for example, when we have the tangent of theta, we, cal we calculated what that is. That's this number here, one of the cells. We say theta is equal to a tan, that's arc tangent, of tangent of theta. That should give us theta, and it will, but it's, it gives it in radians. So how do we do this? We have to, Alex says he likes radians, but he's weird. Uh, we have to multiply it by 180 and divide it by pi. You might remember that the formula for pi is pi over parentheses, close parentheses. This will give you the angle. I know it looks long, but it really isn't that hard. Uh, that will give you the theta, which you need for a column, one of the columns on the spreadsheet. Then remember, when you go to take sine of theta, you got to translate it back into radians also. So how do you know if you did all this stuff right? Well, as it turns out, we're giving you the answer because you're trying to find out the wavelength of this laser light, right? <laughs> what do you know? It says right here what the wavelength is. Kind of gives the answer away, doesn't it? So you don't have to ask me if your data is any good. If your data isn't close to that, it ain't any good. All right? So, lab safety rules. Don't shine the laser in your eyes. Don't shine the laser in your lab partner's eyes. And we don't have any sharks with lasers either. Now, another thing, just this is just for really high resolution. Thank you, Haley. Haley's got, always got to come in here. Uh, Jake has a question. What's your question? What about other people in the classroom's eyes? Um, Not theirs either. No, don't do that either. That's a bad thing. Or the, or the lab instructor or the, the lab uh, supervisor. If you shine it in your eye, the blink reflex is supposed to cause you to close your eye before damage occurs. Yeah, Jake, come on up here, let's test that out. If you hold your eye, if you hold your eye open and stare into the laser, it will cause a spot on your retina. They know this because people have done it. Takes two weeks for the spot to go away because these are only 500 milliwatt lasers. We don't need spot removal. Despite the fact that people have done this, I'm hoping that nobody does it in this lab. Thank you, Greg. And remember, no food or drink in the lab. All right. Now, another thing that just want to let you know is there's only going to be eight stations. So you might be in a group of three. You probably will be. If you are in a station that's on this side of the classroom, you're going to be shining your laser light. You're going to be using the optical bench on the, on the bench. And it's going to be shining onto a piece of paper that's going to be on one of those cabinets over there. If, however, you are over on this side, like Jake is, we are going to put your optical bench on the floor in front of the, uh, in front of your, your bench, and it's going to shine along the floor all the way into the cabinets on the far side, which is not a comic strip anymore. Okay? So, the, uh, the important thing here is please try not to interfere with other people's laser lights by walking through them. Uh, try to get all your stuff as quick as you can and get up there and then I'm going to put people in the back to start with so that they don't you don't interfere with each other. And, and a good uh, cat burglar knows to step over the laser and yes. not through the beam. Yes, if you if you step through the beam you might uh, activate the uh, the security system and the uh, the iron bars might come down over all the windows and you'll be trapped here all day. You don't want that to happen, do you? Do you? No. No. Oh, I don't even know what I'm talking about. They still don't want it to happen. Um, anything else on this lab, Greg? Uh, I think it's pretty well covered. All right. So, I'll see you in the physics lab. And as you notice, I'm wearing a different shirt this time. Wow. <laughs>